Hi, I'm Anna Denton Jones of Refreshing Law Limited, and in today's session, which is being recorded on the 14th of February 2022, I want to talk about holiday pay and some interesting developments in that area. Now, received customer and practice, received wisdom in the UK is you get your allocation of um, a certain number of days holiday, probably plus some bank holidays maybe even these days an unlimited amount of holiday that you can take but that we have a defined period in which we have to take it so either a calendar year or a particular holiday year or even the anniversary sort of annual year that runs from the anniversary of your employment and that if you don't take it in that period then generally you lose your entitlement um there are some employers um, who allow a small proportion of your holiday to be carried forward into the next year, maybe five days, something like that. And maybe with some restrictions about when you have to use it by. So if you carry it across into calendar year, you have to use it by Easter, something like that. And it's long been accepted that for um, reasons connected with discrimination legislation uh, and maternity leave, that ladies who take maternity leave can carry their holiday with them um, and they carry on accruing during that period of leave. But we then had the Pereira decision that confirmed to us that if somebody was on the long term sick and couldn't use their holiday, that again, it would carry forward um, for them to use that at a later stage. And the employers have largely waited to see if employees were going to raise those issues um, perhaps when they're doing things like calculating holiday when somebody leaves uh, maybe giving them the calculation for this year and seeing whether they mention the year before or those sorts of things but now we've got the case of Pimlico Plumbers that's just gone to the Court of Appeal now the main um, thrust of the case was to do with was the plumber involved a worker and therefore potentially entitled to rights like holiday pay, or was he a genuinely self-employed contractor? But we won't bore ourselves with that for today. We'll just focus on what it said about holiday pay. So there'd been a case called King and Sash Windows, um, similar sort of issue with um, was somebody employed or, or not. Um, and that case essentially decided that our right to paid holiday pay is a composite right. So the, uh, excuse me, I'm going to sneeze. Um, the right to the leave and the right to the pay aren't sort of separate things. They come together. And that this accrues year by year whilst we're employed and it crystallises when the employee leaves. Because if you remember under the working time regulations, that's when payment in lieu of holiday occurs. We don't do it beforehand, but if somebody leaves and they've got a crude leave, then we can pay them that um, sum. So that's where the thinking had got to. And up until then, we tended to treat unpaid holiday like um, Mr King, like the chap in Pimlico Plumbers, as being an unlawful deduction from wages claim. So like any other claim for underpayment of, I don't know, an allowance or something that we were saying the employer had failed to pay the employee. And there's a particular regime for dealing with that in terms of um, the Employment Rights Act. It used to be the Wages Act many, many years ago. It became a particular section, if you like, of the Employment Rights Act of 1996. And the key issue around that is timing to bring a claim. So if you are claiming under the unlawful deductions regime, then your claim has to be within three months of the last time you were correctly paid, not three months from the date on which your employment terminates. So 
if it's the former, people tend to get caught out by that. They don't realise they have to get their claim in in, in, in time. People are perhaps more knowledgeable around three months from the date in which their employment ends. So we've now got this clarification that this right crystallises when the employment ends and that's when time will tick from. Now, um, knock-on effect of that is in the Bear Scotland case, which is another very famous case we had a few years ago uh, in relation to how holiday pay is calculated and whether it should be basic pay or whether other things should be included. The sort of throwaway comment that was made in that case was a suggestion that if an employer corrected themselves or there was a long period of time when there wasn't any holiday being taken so more than three months where uh, there was no um, holiday pay being paid that that would break a series of deductions and the employee wouldn't be able to claim for the, the historical stuff they'd have to kind of start the clock again um, if we are getting rid of the unlawful deductions kind of regime from this holiday pay equation, which the Court of Appeal has now said we are, then obviously that's meaningless. Um, what they said in Bear Scotland falls away and the Court of Appeal have indeed cast doubt on what was said in Pimlico Plummer, in, in Bear Scotland rather. The importance of that is that if it's an unlawful deduction from wages, when the Bear Scotland decision came out and everybody started panicking about the fact that they hadn't correctly calculated holiday pay ever, um, the government very swiftly brought in regulations that said you can only go back two years for any unlawful deduction from wages claim. If we are binning that regime, then potentially we can claim back as far as we need to. So, for example, in Pimlico Pumpers, the chap could claim all the holiday pay he might have accrued over all the years that he worked for Pimlico Plumbers, not just the most recent year or the most recent two years. The third really big implication, and this is the one that is a killer for all employers, is that they've read some extra wording into the working time regulations in order to make it work. So in order to get our UK legislation to work with the principles of the EC rules that sit behind it, they have now interpreted Regulation 1316 of the working time regulations to say that if a, an employer fails to either recognise somebody's got the right to paid leave, so as in the King case and the Pimlico Plumbers case, where they were saying, well, you're not even a worker, so you're not getting anything. If that happens, or, and this is the bit you should all be interested in, the employer cannot show that they've provided a facility for the taking of such leave, then the worker's entitled to carry that leave forward into a further year. So that leaves us with the undoubtedly fertile ground for future people to all argue about what is providing a facility for the employee to take their leave. Is the employer doing enough to encourage employees to take their leave? And it's not just doing it, is it? It's going to be evidencing it for the tribunal, which means some kind of paper trail where you can show you've done your damnedest, if you like, to make sure employees are taking their leave. So, for example, I've had coffee with somebody this week who's told me, you know, February the 14th, she has 20 days of holiday accrued that she hasn't taken this year because she's not very good at taking her holidays and it's got to be used by April. Well, under this uh, new idea um, potentially she can carry that forward into the next year if the employer has not taken steps to get her to take it this year and of course if in, the employer wants to give the employee notice to take holiday they've got to give double the amount so for 20 days holiday um, 
in one block i know no employees ever going to get somebody to take 20 days off in one go they'd have to give 40 days notice well you know if you get to this time of year and and you've got that kind of build up you haven't got enough time left even if you could afford for the employee to take 20 days out so lots and lots of issues are going to arise for employers having to have calendars i think and be prompting employees or maybe changing their rules so you have to use so many days in each quarter of the year for example um creative ways to make people take their holidays answers on a postcard please it's a d e n t o n at refreshinglawltd.co.uk